Hi, my name's Philip Brunton, and welcome to Jazz Play lesson number one. This is a unique set of 10 play-along lessons, each with an accompanying PDF worksheet, available from mymusicpb.com forward slash jazzplate. Work at your own pace, following the lessons in order, even if you find it easy at first. Important theory, oral, technical, and stylistic features are being developed in these tiered lessons to ensure your success at every stage. And for all the musicians joining us who are maybe used to playing from a more classical plate of music, this course will ensure you gain all the knowledge and skills to play, teach, and enjoy your jazz improvisation. So let's get started. Have you downloaded your lesson one PDF worksheet for your specific instrument key so that you can play along? Okay, lesson one, we're starting with the first three notes of the major scale at the top of your page there. And the first and third note create a major third interval. And that sound is crucial for hearing and identifying when we're improvising over major bass chords. That difference to a minor, and back to major. For those new to reading chord symbols, these are written above the music, and they're shown as an uppercase letter. If there's no symbol attached to the letter, then you can assume it's a major bass chord, and that's what we'll reflect our improvisation on. So let's get started with our first exercise. As this is the play along course, let's have a tuning note. Concert A, 440. Let's get started with exercise number one. We're going to play the first three notes so we can hear that major third. Uh, I'm going to play the first bar and you copy back on the second bar and we'll work our way through chromatically the first three notes of every key. Now that exercise may have seemed really simple for you, but it's key to get that major third sound into your ears and also hearing the accompaniment as played by the piano. And we say the piano is comping the chords, it's complementing the chords. And then the bass, and then we have a drum track along with that. So you're hearing them together along with what you're doing. And that's really benefiting at these early stages, that major third sound. So we're moving on to exercise number two now. We're gonna to play together but without any gaps between each chord, so one into the next.
As you're working through these next set of exercises, my advice if you're a breathing instrument is to breathe between every four bars. That establishes you into a four bar phrase structure, which is really useful in your jazz improvisation. So, so far our core progression has been going through chromatically one chord to the next. This time we're going through what's called a cycle of fifths, which would mean either five notes lower or the same as four notes up. So this is exercise number three, playing along with me, no gaps, and the cycle of fifths. Okay, were there any chords there you need to practice again? Remembering it's not notes that are difficult, it's combination of notes, it's patterns. So if highlight which bars you found difficult and want to practice the group of notes before and after the difficulties that were found. And remember, practicing is repeating correctly. So if it means playing it slowly a couple of times, a couple of bars, then get comfortable. So we move on to exercise four now and we introduce swing. We all know that triplet description of swing where the beat notes are two thirds longer than the offbeat notes. But what's really key to swing is where the emphasis on the offbeats. And that's shown as a, with my articulation there. And this is really useful for string players who are improvising. Now we don't want to accent these articulations, just want to give it a lazy feel to give us the right stylistic element. Okay, this is exercise number four with the swing articulation. I'll play the first bar so you can get the sound, the style into your ear, and then you repeat on the next bar. Okay, back and forth. Exercise number five, without the gaps, we're playing together in a chromatic progression.
Okay, progressing on to exercise number six now with cycle of fifths. Okay, that completes our exercises for lesson one, and now we're going to finish off with some improvisation. You go to page three of your worksheet, and you see every line is a new chord, and it's working through a progression of cycle fifths working our way down. Okay, now it's a column response. I'll play two bars, and you play two bars. This is really helpful for getting you to know your four bar phrase structures. So um, first time we go through, we're just going to use the first note of the chords. So that's the roots. And I'll play two bars and you repeat back the same rhythm. The second time you get more of an improvisation going on because I'll come up with a little tune and then make use of call drawing on some of my rhythms to come up your own sequence of the two notes. Here's an example where I use two notes. You might come back with... And then the third time we work our way through, you got three notes. And you might play. Okay. So here we go. Enjoy your improvisation, especially if this is the first time you've ever done it.
Okay, how'd you get on with that? I appreciate it may have been really easy for some of you, but these are key building blocks being set for oral skills, getting that major third and your phrase structure foundation set up for the four bar phrase call and response. So that completes lesson number one. If there's anything you need to practice, please go back. And if you found that all rather easy, not to worry because these are foundations being set, really important foundations for your improvisation as we progress into more advanced features in later lessons. So I look forward to seeing you in lesson number two. If you get a chance, please subscribe and share this video with other friends. Bye for now.